The UK budget 2021 was presented on the 3rd of March 21. And if you're an individual UK taxpayer or an owner of a small business, whether it be a limited company, LLP, sole trader or partnership, then stay tuned. In this part two of our UK budget 2021 special series, we are going to do a deep dive into the income tax rates and thresholds for the 21-22 tax year, the full suite of personal allowances available to you, national insurance rates and thresholds, dividend rates and thresholds, and finally, helping you decide a tax optimal director salary and dividends in the 21-22 tax year. This video is positioned to help you do some tax planning in advance for the 21-22 tax year. That starts on the 6th of April, 2021, through to the 5th of April, 2021. And we've prepared a comprehensive handout that we'll be referring to throughout this video. So before we start, take a pause and download a digital copy instantly using the link in the description box below. Before I get into today's video, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to make sure you're kept up to date with all of our latest content. This really helps us to produce more helpful videos and to get you real quality advice from real qualified accountants. So let's begin with income tax rates and thresholds on page two of our handout. To be clear, income tax applies to your employed earnings, that is pay as you earn. And if you are a self-employed sole trader or partnership on your taxable profits. Income tax rates differ from dividend tax rates, which we'll cover later on. There are different rates if you are in England, Wales and Northern Ireland compared to Scotland. Starting with England, Wales and Northern Ireland, you will see the actual income tax rates of 20%, 40% and 45% respectively have not changed in the UK budget of 2021. The thresholds have increased ever so slightly. So now you as a UK tax resident individual can earn up to £12,570 per annum tax free, an increase of £70 on the 20 to 21 tax year. There is still the 0% starting rate for savings. This simply means if you have earned up to £5,000 in gross interest off your savings, then this interest will not be taxed. It is standard practice for banks and building societies to pay you gross interest on your savings. But beware, it is only really useful if you have no or low non-savings earnings, such as a salary. Before we continue with today's video, we're thrilled to be launching the Accounting and Tax Academy membership site this year. We'll be posting downloadable resources, tax tutorials, and exclusive courses that you won't find anywhere else. And the best part of it is, it's absolutely free to join. Head to the link in the description box below to find out more. If you are a Scottish taxpayer, there are five levels of income tax rates, and the changes for the 21-22 tax year are too very marginal. Scottish taxpayers pay the same tax as the rest of the UK on dividends and savings interest. And as things currently stand at the date of this video, Scottish income tax rates and thresholds are subject to parliamentary approval. This is quite an important section as you as a UK tax resident person has available to them some personal tax free allowances. Certain non UK residents can also claim these UK personal allowances too. Refer to page four of our handout and let's take a closer look at the full suite of personal allowances in the UK. The standard individual personal allowance has increased to £12,570 per annum in the 21 to 22 year, up £70 from the last tax year. So this means that you can earn up to £12,570 completely tax free. But do note there is an income limit of £100,000 per annum for this personal allowance. If your taxable earnings start exceeding this level, the personal allowance is gradually reduced. And once your earnings exceed approximately £125,000, your personal allowance disappears altogether. Perhaps to some of you, a feeble attempt, but still a considerable little touch that is often overlooked, is the ability to transfer 10% of your personal allowance to your spouse or civil partner. So in 21-22, you can transfer £1,260 of any unused personal allowance to your spouse or civil partner. And if they are a basic tax rate payer, that's a £252 saving per annum and £504 for a higher rate 40% tax payer. If you rent a room in your residential dwelling, you can earn up to £7,500 per annum tax free. This is an allowance available to all UK tax residents that is over and above the standard individual personal allowance. 
If you are registered a blind person, you get an additional £2,520 of tax-free allowance over and above the standard individual personal allowance. And if you don't use this allowance, you can actually transfer it to your spouse or civil partner, regardless of whether they are registered blind or not. The married couples allowance acts as what is known as a tax reducer. So if you are married and born before the stated date on the handout, you are eligible for this. And finally, there's the personal savings allowance. This simply allows you as an individual to earn gross interest on savings up to the stated amount tax free, depending on which category of taxpayer you eventually will fall into into the 21-22 tax year. A common question we always get asked is why? Why do you have to pay national insurance? Some commentators describe national insurance as a stealth tax, in other words, income tax in disguise. However, this definition is perhaps a little harsh as there are some benefits to you of paying a certain level of salary and making national insurance contributions. You see, unlike taxes, national insurance contributions are paid into a national insurance fund and this fund is used to provide social security and benefits. Our handout on page 7 shows the key benefits and what type of national insurance applies. If you have not already done so, pause and download it instantly by following the link in the description box below. We'll start with a PAYE employee or a limited company director who is taking a PAYE director salary and who are subject to Class 1 primary national insurance as shown on page 6 of our handout. The LEL, known as a lower earnings limit, is the amount of earnings you will need to earn in the 21-22 tax year to qualify for a basic state pension credit. If you recall on page 7 of our handout, a qualifying credit goes towards your final basic state pension, which you will receive when you reach the state retirement age. In 2021-22, the amount is £120 per week or £6,240 per annum. Please note there is no actual national insurance payable on earnings up to this amount. You simply receive a national insurance credit. And furthermore, it is very important you administer your salary through a PAYE system to make sure your credit is properly registered with HMRC and the Department of Wealth and Pensions. Simply paying yourself through a bank transaction without making the necessary submission to HMRC will not cut the mustard. Next is the primary threshold. It has increased to £184 per week in 21-22, up a grand £1 per week. So if your earnings are up to the annual equivalent of £9,568 for this tax year, then you still do not pay any national insurance contributions personally as an employee or director. Amounts above this and up to the upper earnings limit, national insurance will be payable at 12%. The upper earnings limit has increased by £5 per week to £967 per a week or £50,284 per annum. And finally, any earnings above the upper earnings limit of £50,284 per annum will be liable to national insurance at 2%. And a point to note, Directors Class 1 national insurance contributions are calculated on what's known as an annual basis, which is different from an employee. The next section relates to you employers and limited company business owners. Class 1 secondary national insurance applies to your limited company business and is paid by your company on behalf of a PAYE employee or director. It does not apply to self-employed sole traders or partnerships. That section is coming next. So starting from the secondary threshold of £170 per week or £8,840 per annum, if you pay yourself as a director or any of your employees above this amount, then your company is liable to pay 13.8% national insurance on any earnings above this threshold. Your company could be eligible for the National Insurance Employment Allowance, which has been frozen at £4,000 per annum in the 21-22 tax year, as shown in page six of our handout. So for example, if your company class one secondary national insurance liability for the 21-22 tax year adds up to £4,000 or any amount below this, then your company can use the employment allowance to offset this liability and actually pay no national insurance up to this limit. However, the National Insurance Employment Allowance is not applicable to the following. If you're a single director limited company with no other employees, off payroll workers, these are employees who are deemed inside IR35. And if your limited company had a class one secondary national insurance bill in excess of £100,000 in the 2021 tax year, regardless of anything else, your company will not qualify for the employment allowance in the 21-22 tax year. However, most small limited companies will not be affected by this particular exclusion. 
If you are a married woman who has opted into the reduced rate scheme, well, then you pay a reduced rate of only 5.85% between the primary and upper threshold. However, there are disadvantages to this scheme too. And finally, national insurance rates for the self-employed, often sole traders and partnership businesses. If a self-employed business generates profits in the 21-22 tax year, then you are subject to paying Class 2 and Class 4 national insurance. For Class 2, your profits must exceed £6,515 per annum, up by £40 from the last tax year. And if they do, you pay a flat £3.05 per week or £158.60 per year. For Class 4 National Insurance, your profits in the range between £9,568 per annum to £50,270 per annum, you will pay 9% National Insurance. Any profits above £50,270 per annum is subject to Class 4 National Insurance at 2%. There is a class three voluntary category that you can pay, well, voluntarily. This is useful if you are low on contributions or want to top up your basic and new state pension qualifying credits. Moving on to dividend tax rates and thresholds on page five of our handout. So as a bit of a background, dividends themselves are only payable by limited companies from after corporation tax profits or existing distributable reserves to shareholders. So if you are a shareholder who receives a dividend, these are subject to dividend tax to be paid by you personally. Dividends are paid out in proportion to your shareholding. So for example, if you own 50% of the shares in your limited company and your partner owns the other 50%, you will each receive 50% of the profits or distributable reserves. The directors of your company decide what amount of dividends are to be paid. And quite often you are probably a director and shareholder of your own company. Now for the taxes. First of all, there is a dividend allowance of 2000 pounds in the 21-22 tax year, the same as the last tax year. So each shareholder can receive up to this amount in dividends completely tax-free. Dividend tax rates are chargeable in line with income tax thresholds. So as you can see from the handout on page five, any dividends between £12,571 and £50,270 are subject to the ordinary rate of 7.5%. Any dividends between £50,271 and £150,000 will be subject to dividend tax at 32.5%, the higher rate. And finally, any dividends over and above £150,000 are taxed at the additional rate of 38.1%. So this section is specifically for you if you are a limited company director shareholder and are looking to optimize your salary and dividends for the 21-22 tax year. Essentially, you have a choice of what level of tax optimized director salary to pay yourself as follows. Number one is up to the class one primary threshold of £9,568 per annum, or number two, up to the personal allowance threshold of £12,570 per annum. Now, for either of these options, you'll pay no income tax. And please remember, as a company director, you can set your own director's salary at any amount, so long as your company has the funds to pay it, and if there are any other directors or shareholders, they are in agreement. With the first option, you will pay no class one primary national insurance. And if you are a single director with no PAYE employees in your business, then it is perhaps the recommended option for you, assuming tax optimization is your objective. There are non-tax reasons as to why you would pay yourself a much higher salary. Your company will end up paying a very small amount of class one secondary national insurance of about hundred pounds for the tax year but that's more than offset by a corporation tax saving of about £145 your company will receive at this level of director salary. The other advantage with this option is that you can then take a further £3,002 per annum as a dividend tax free because the £9,568 plus the £3,002 takes you up to your personal allowance of £12,507. So if you don't use it, you will lose it. If you are a limited company business with more than one director or a single director with a paid employee on PAYE, then as a director, you will want to consider option two, a salary up to the 12,570 personal allowance threshold. Why? Because your company will more than likely qualify for the national insurance employment allowance of 4,000 pounds and therefore pay no class one secondary national insurance up to this allowance amount. 
So let's assume you take up option one, the class one primary threshold salary of £9,568 per annum. You take the additional £3,002 as a dividend and then another £2,000 as a tax-free dividend allowance. Your total aggregate tax-free personal income so far is £14,570. And finally, a further £35,700 can be paid in dividends per shareholder at the ordinary rate of 7.5%. This provides a total personal income of £50,270 for the 2021-22 tax year, and you will only pay £2,678 in dividend tax. Now, please let us be clear here that this is a generic but yet a very applicable example based on certain assumptions. The main assumption is that you have no other sources of income from anywhere else in the 21-22 tax year amongst others. Unfortunately, our video cannot cover every specific circumstance or scenario. So if you are expecting other sources of income or the dynamics of your income and assets are more complex, and if you are looking for specific advice for your particular scenario, why not try our bite-sized advisory service by following the link in the description box below. I hope this video has helped you understand some of the changes in the UK budget 2021 and the new tax rates and thresholds in a bit more detail and taking you one step closer to knowing your numbers. As always, let us know in the comments your thoughts on today's video or if there are any topics you'd like us to cover in the future. Finally, be sure to like and subscribe as this really does help us to get our content out there. This is Tony D'Angelo for the Accounting and Tax Academy. Thanks for tuning in.